to a day in the life at Breen Sports Horses. So the other day I was very kindly invited by Caroline and Trevor Breen to come over to their international show jumping yard and oh my goodness I had so much fun so I'd just like to say a huge thank you to the Breens again for very kindly having me. So my morning started off with having to get all of the horses ready for the day so the first thing I had to do was take off the horses stable rugs and put on their fly rugs and their fly masks as well as their turnout boots as well to protect their legs out in the field and lastly of course an apple as a treat is always welcomed by the horses after that it's then time to turn the horses out into the field the hard work hadn't finished there it was then time to muck out all of the stables and luckily I had a huge industrial sized wheelbarrow for the job because when you have that many stables to muck out a bigger wheelbarrow does help after that it was then time to sweep up the stables and make them look as neat as possible and today was also the horses new shavings day and while I was making sure that the horses had a lovely big comfortable shavings bed I did have a little help from over here too. Oh, you helping out? Meanwhile I was mucking, everything was going in the yard, especially as a lot of the horses had come back very late from a show the night before. Things needed to be unpacked and the horses that weren't at the show also needed to be exercised. For some horses it was a hacking day across the fields and for others it was a flat work day or a jumping day so it was then time to find some poles and some wings and get some fences set up. Hi Esme, how are you? I'm good thank you, thank you so much for having me here today. Obviously you had a late night last night coming back from Bowlesworth, how was that? Yeah, it was a really good show. Uh, thanks for coming. We're re really happy to have you here. Um, yeah, late night last night, but it's um, yeah, kind of part and parcel of the job, really. Yep. <laughs> uh, and now, yeah, Monday morning, new new day, new week, and kind of get cracking on, on the horses that weren't at the show for, for this week's show. Awesome. So are we setting up some jumps today? Yeah, that's my plan. I was going to set up a little grid and exercise for those horses just to get them going for this week. So I was hoping you'd give me a hand. Yeah, I'm happy to. It's just a nice three stride, so we kind of go one, two, three. So that to me is nice because I'm not going to be coming in too fast to this. So this they're going to need a little bit more room. So one, two, three, and I like that half stride left. If you know yeah. that that's a bit longer than the first one, mm -hmm. and that's because they obviously they have to jump and leave the floor. They're going to cover more ground. Because again, I want them to. I want this pole to just make them get a nice bascule shape. Uh, so they have to land inside this pole, and then it's also setting them up for. Uh, for this jump as well they have a little bit more than that one so mm -hmm. i want them to land correctly then they take a nice stride but then they have enough room to take off and jump this one i'm not going to jump too big and if i need to i'll just i'll, re I'll if if i go bigger i'll get i'll move it a little bit more and um and I also want to teach the horse when they jump that they've got to prop and come back off the jumps. That's yeah. the idea. Because nowadays, you know, when you're riding them at the jump and we have to be so fast to win classes, they've got to jump this way off the jump, not jump that way. So mm -hmm. you're all the time teaching them, try and get the hocks in on them, get their back, uh, back legs under them to teach them to come and get power. And then we have one more pole out the back to get that bascule shape again. Please excuse me And I don't really give a damn how much you make, my dear So please excuse me Not looking for typical, 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 typical LA guys I've been staying busy and I don't have time to waste It's time that you see If you wanna impress me Show some depth 
Caroline and Trevor train with their horses at home and do some jumping but of course the hard work didn't stop there if it was putting up jumps moving poles and jump wings or of course the job that you guys know I'm best at cleaning and picking up poo but little did I know after all of that hard work is that Caroline had a very big surprise for me so Esme you've had a full day's working uh, with us at Breen Sport Horses yeah. you've mucked out turned horses out in the field. Uh, you've given us a jump on a few horses. Yeah. So you might as well get a reward yourself now and have a little ride and jump on Dougie. Oh, wow, thank you so much. I'm very excited. Dougie seems really cool. <laughs> yeah, so he's 16 years old. Uh, he's been with me for eight years now. We've done everything together. He's won in most international arenas in Europe. So he's a really special horse to us at Breen Sport Horses. Um, and I think you're gonna have a great time riding him. Oh, thank you. Thank you for trusting me with him as well. Oh. No worries, should we get him tacked up? Yeah, sure. When Caroline said that I could ride Dougie, I was honestly so shocked, surprised, nervous and excited all at once because Dougie is such a nice horse. He's a Grand Prix horse that's gone up to the top level. And for someone like me who isn't a professional rider to have an opportunity to ride such a nice horse really is a once in a lifetime opportunity but I didn't let the nerves get the better of me I was really excited so then it was time to finally get on Dougie it was honestly such a pinch me moment it didn't really feel that real to be able to ride a horse with this much competition success but anyway it was then time to go out into the arena warm up and then it was time for Caroline and Trevor to give me a bit of a lesson yeah, I could have the worst day ever or be so upset or outside things could really upset me and he's the one thing which you can guarantee you'll go into the ring and just come out with the biggest smile on your face he is he's an absolute dream so enjoy it yeah so you can shorten your reins up with him and go light seat you can circle you can wait move him forwards whatever suits just as long as he's warmed up and he's bending and things like that but he has a completely different engine when he's cantering. Yeah. Really good, super. Yeah, that's perfect. Good. Okay, so just nice and relaxed. You don't need leg. Yeah. Just, he knows his job, just nice and relaxed, straight line up to your cross pole, land. You tend, you saw me obviously on the other horses, I ride light seat a lot. Just land and stay light and just literally enjoy him. Awesome. Just have fun. Cool. Hey. Super. Are you ready? Perfect, so just wait and let the fence come Are to you. Are you ready? Are you ready? About to change your life. Very good. That's it, just wait. Very good. Perfect, absolutely perfect, Esme. Beautiful, Good. fantastic. Super, look up, don't push, look up, look up. Beautiful. Yeah, and already there with the body position, that's better. And by naturally you keeping up like that, we're not going so far forward in our position and we tend to slow down the jump, really good. Riding Dougie was just absolutely incredible. To ride a horse that I've never sat on before and jump one of the biggest fences I've ever done and make it feel so easy at the same time. It's a moment I'll never forget and I really cannot thank the Breens enough. Just take it slow and be in the moment. Body's 
sit down have a little bit of a chat but before we start I just wanted to say thank you so much for letting me ride Dougie and for the lesson as well I had so much fun and he was just awesome oh I'm so glad you enjoyed him that is literally the way I feel every time I sit on him he yep. just makes you feel magical and special and enjoys it um, which then you know follows through to us so yep. no, I'm glad and, and you did a fantastic job by the way oh I think very you. very good I was very <laughs> impressed were you I was really impressed. Um, I think there's a bright future ahead of you. We need to get you in the game. Yeah. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Come back for some lessons then. Absolutely. That'd be awesome. Yeah, I'm sure Joey would be up for that as well. Perfect. Look forward to it. <laughs> cool. So with horses, you're always learning something new. But which horse would you say, both of you, has taught you the most? I suppose for me, t uh, from a teaching point of view, uh, Adventure de Canaan is a horse that um, is very close to my heart, first of all. Um, he's uh, owned by Karen Swan and uh, I had him his whole career. Uh, obviously, Karen had him until he was seven and then uh, I, I, you know, he's probably one of the only horses I've actually retired. Um, we, you know, we, we came up all the way, uh, up to Nations Cup, won the Derby uh, and then obviously Addy went through the traumatic experience of losing his eye. Um, uh, it was something we dealt with for quite a long time and eventually you know he lost his eye and then having to reassess and at, at one time when I said to Karen first she thought that was it when his eye had to come out and he would have to retire and I was like no no we're, we'll go again and so she was delighted and so then just to reassess after being very successful a, a, a very dramatic change and then to, to kind of you know reset the clock and go again and, and we both had to learn things again some things we we just picked up and went down other things we learned and i just found um it was a fantastic experience to learn that and obviously from he was for me the most intelligent horse that i've ever ridden um and uh, had a heart the size of a lion so that must have been yeah a really big change for him and caroline what horse would you say has been the one uh, that's taught believe you the it most? or not not dougie because he just <laughs> makes it too easy and too fun and just knows his job inside out oh. um i had a horse um a good few years ago called farina who uh, i rode for an owner and jumped some bigger classes on her and she was really really special she tried really hard in the ring for me got me back jumping some bigger classes um i had a lovely lovely attitude to, to going to shows and yeah just it, it was it was a really sort of magical special building building up time after having the kids and things like that getting back into it so she was she was very special to me oh awesome so trevor you have had a lot of success in your career and that's also included winning the hickster derby twice um i've been uh, had the really cool experience to take my connemara pony casper up to the top of the hickster bank but you know, the view up there is incredible, but you're also really high up. What do you look for in a derby horse? Um, <clears throat> look for in a derby horse, it's a, it's a really, it's a question I get asked a lot and I, I always am a bit uh, flummoxed when I'm asked it because it's, it's something that just, it's not something, a quality you look for, it's just something that you ride a horse and you get a feeling that this could be a derby horse. Um, Basically, they need to be brave because of, like you said, uh, the bank, uh, the Devil's Dyke, the water jump, the dry ditch, the double of ditches, you know, it goes on. Um, so that's first and foremost. But um, nowadays, they've got to be equally as careful because uh, the standard has gotten so much higher. You know, you, to win, you've got to be, worst case, one down, you know, you're going to have to jump off. But you need to be clear, really. To, to, so they've got to be really careful. Um, and uh, they've got to be intelligent and have a huge heart. Um, so, I mean, but uh, it's just, for me, it, a horse that turns into a derby horse is one that has done Grand Prix um, 
is good at them uh, and uh, and then you just think maybe they have that that bit of bravery that they could go that extra extra mile in a derby and they've got to have that last bit of stamina as well mm -hmm. because a typical course we ride is about 70 80 seconds time allowed and the derby is 180 seconds so that's three minutes as opposed to basically one so I mean that's a two thirds longer course so they've got to be really fit uh, but they've also got to have that big engine as well. Definitely has to be a one in a million sort of horse then. Yeah they don't grow on trees so no. for sure. <laughs> So in the show jumping world, you're sort of known as the equestrian power couple. But the real question is, who would you say is the boss? <laughs> uh, Answer wisely. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I think, uh, I, I, like, we, I think we work well together. Um, yep. I think uh, Caroline does certain elements of the, of the business really well. Um, and then I do others, uh, uh, I think, quite well as well. So uh, I think the key is, you know, there's, a, there's probably not one dictator in the whole thing, but uh, I think, I suppose, the, the old saying, uh, teamwork makes the dream work, you know? Safe answer. Yeah, very, <laughs> yeah. very, very PC answer. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, I would agree quite a lot with that. Mm -hmm. I mean, we do work very closely together. Don't know many other couples that work together, live together, travel together, spend most of their time together um, you know and still got to feed off each other and do it in a way which is you know you're not going to annoy each other I think that that is that is the key but we seem to have we seem to have it down down to a T pretty well yeah well, it works works pretty well you well know. definitely looks like it so. yeah <laughs> <laughs> and I'm definitely the boss yeah <laughs> On my channel, I have a question that I quite like to ask riders. However, there's two different ways you could go. So the question is, if you could really do a show jumping round, which one would it be and why? So some people would choose one that went well because they'd want to relive the memory and then others would choose one which maybe didn't go quite so well that they would change so they'd have a better result. What would you choose? So uh, a strange answer to a question because I don't actually have any want to go into this class, but. In my head, it's a class that I would love to do, but I actually just don't think I'd be brave enough to jump that high. I would love to do really well in a puissance. I cannot see myself ever going in to um, a round and jumping like two meters 15, which Trev won at Bowlesworth. Uh, it's just literally mind blowingly huge, but I would love to have that feeling of jumping it and going clear and the crowds and just such a massive, massive, one obstacle to go and compete at. So a bit of an odd one, but yeah, um, yeah that's definitely what I'd love to do. And Trevor? Uh, as soon as you asked that question, it's, an, it's a question I've never been asked before, but as soon as you asked it, one round jumped out of me and it was around in the Hickstead Derby uh, with Adventure to Cannon um, and it was the year I was second and I had the dry ditch down and it was for me the best round I've jumped in the Derby. Um, and he just, I mean, it, only Paul he touched the whole round, clipped the dry ditch behind, like barely touched it. And it cost us the win and we finished second. Um, but it was also for a more important reason. It was my mum had passed away uh, just a week previous to the derby. So it was, and I was a favourite to win the derby as well. And I, I really- It was a I, huge was amount of pressure, wasn't it? Mm. it, it, was, it from, was from everyone sort of saying, you know, it, it was one of those classes that, it was well, he was ready to win the derby and, yeah. and in the derby trial uh, Shane I was in the lead Shane beat me my brother he won the derby trial I was second I just thought it was in the stars everything was aligning and um, and it just didn't come off and if there was one round I could repeat and just get that pole out of the way that would be it and uh, it was it was the worst second place I've ever had and I was absolutely gutted but luckily you know as things work out I won it the following year and, and to be honest I was a bit lucky to win it the following year to be honest. I think in reality uh, Philip Miller beat me that year and I beat him the following year but in reality I think we deserve to win the years the other way around I, and it would have been probably a better result but anyway we both got the win and it was all good but yeah Aww. that's definitely the round I would love to have back again. So guys, I just wanted to say another huge thank you for having me here today. I have had so much fun. Yeah, thanks so much for coming. I think everyone from the horses, Dougie, <laughs> uh, our staff, the kids, we've, we've loved having you here and uh, we hope you come back again soon.
Yeah, definitely. It's been a breath of fresh air and a uh, delight to have you. And hopefully we'll see you again for a few lessons. Oh, that would be awesome. <laughs> I'd love that. So anyway, guys, before today's video ends, I'd like to say a huge thank you to Aria as well for making today's video possible. I'd like to say a huge thank you to you guys for watching today's video. If you're new or have not done so already, please like and subscribe because it really does help me out and I really do appreciate it. And I'll see you all next time. Bye.